Hello, my name is Mike Goldman and welcome to On The Mic. Today we talk about this, the gut. Yes, all about the microbiome. And we have a microbiologist on the show, one of the world's best, a microbiologist with 50 years experience. He is the founder of an incredible product by the name of ProGood. It's a pre and probiotic. He's in the new movie. Well, it's not really new now. It's been out for a while. The gut film, that gut movie, which has got some awesome stories behind it. We want to talk about how the gut is attached to your brain in so many different ways with depression and your, your skin and, and uh, immune disorders got a million questions for you and a lot of people have been writing in and wanting to uh to talk about this some more his name is dr john elliman well he's not really a doctor but you could almost call you a doctor certainly doctors refer patients to me so maybe you could from that point of view with uh quotation marks around the doctor please <laughs> but the, the the amount of time you have been working as a microbiologist doesn't that qualify you as like at least a professor <laughs> well in italy they would call me doctor but uh, in Australia, a bachelor's degree doesn't qualify you as a doctor. Okay, let's start again. Prego, buongiorno, <laughs> e microbiologist, Dr. Elliman. Yeah. Let me just pretend it's only going to Italy. Buongiorno. Welcome to the show, mate. Good. Hey, I've known you for years mm. and obviously best friends with your son, Johnny Elliman, who runs yes. ProGood, which is, yes. is one of your inventions. It's a pre and probiotic. It's absolutely amazing. Let's start the show by talking about this incredible product and, okay. and what it does. And by the way, this isn't an infomercial. This is something that, that could save your life, basically. I mean, I've known so many people like myself that can't live without this, this product because I can't remember the last time I was sick since I've been taking it. Well, true. Same with me, actually. So, uh, and I've been taking this sort of thing for 20 years. So, uh, yes, look, we've got to be a little bit... Uh, circumspect about making health claims uh, we should say may about, help about me though because I, I know you always see I know. you see those commercials especially in the US where they have a, a disclaimer at the end yeah. oh, this product may give you crabs it, <laughs> it may give you the runs it may make you throw up and vomit profusely but you could look as good as these people riding a bike in this commercial and, and you, but I, I'm talking from my own perspective am I allowed to just say this is what it does for me you are but I can't advertise uh, these you, things you That's can't no you, you can you say a, what you you feel. have a product and because I have no money or whatever. That's right. Okay, cool. That's right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, um, let me just say what, what this product has done for me and then you can explain what okay. it is. Uh, so I used, to, I used to get a lot of upset tummies. It was, it was a weird thing. When I went to Thailand a long time ago, uh, probably about 10 years ago, I, uh, I, I started getting, um, so I don't know if it was irritable bowel syndrome or it was just like a, if I have uh, this tiniest little bit of dairy, I'd just have the runs. I wouldn't, you know, mm. my stomach would always play up. So I went off dairy, but... Um, since I, I've been taking your product, even though apparently it has a little bit of dairy in it. Well, no, actually, the, the current version has no dairy at oh, all. Okay, in but it. did it used to? Yes. Oh, okay, yeah, right. Yeah, but yeah. it's like I'm, I'm, my stomach's been fine since then. And, That's right. And I found myself not getting that sick, but my, my yeah. uh, ever getting sick, really, except for hungover on a few occasions. But I blame your son for that. He reckons it's a great hangover cure, and he should know. He gets plenty of them. Absolutely, I do. My dad as well, who's uh, had cancer for eight years, and uh, you know, yeah. now yeah, a lot, a lot more doctors who never believed it are saying, you know, the the microbiome it, it promotes the immune system and helps helps cancer patients. And I know that you you have a couple of stories about doctors who have approached you recently and wanting to talk about uh, how you, you can help their cancer patients. But it's a brilliant product. Just mm. explain to everyone uh, first off what you do, and then we'll we'll get into the product. Okay, well, my background is in dairy microbiology, and uh, most of my career was in um, research growing cultures for the dairy industry, cheese, yogurt, probiotics, that sort of thing, and uh, I've had a lot to do with universities, I've been on uh, committees and things like that at universities, and um, uh, we had an association with uh, the um, University of New South Wales, where we had uh, some of my staff which were what you would call genetic engineers while we were trying to understand the genetics of cultures, not producing genetically engineered cultures for anyone, but understanding the genetics. The genetics of cultures meaning, you know... You know, looking at their DNA, trying to make them resistant to viruses that attack bacteria and things like that because that's always a big threat in the cheese industry. Mm. Um, they're viruses that only attack bacteria, so they're not viruses that attack humans. But making them resistant to that, some of my staff were on site at the University of New South Wales and um, Professor Noel Dunn there was successful in applying for funding from the government for a cooperative research centre 
and CSIRO staff from the Division of Dairying in Victoria were involved and we did a lot of research um, selecting the best possible cultures uh, with the biggest effect on gut problems and then also some of the parallel research done CSIRO human nutrition in Adelaide demonstrated that if you uh, combined various what are called prebiotics, which are fibre ingredients that feed the probiotics. If you combine several of those in different combinations, you can get enormous boost effect mm. to the probiotic cultures. As they go down your intestine, they multiply on this f packed lunch that mm -hmm. we, can, we give them. Mm. And This is food you're sticking in your gut. It's exactly. all about the packed lunch because it goes, right. goes through everywhere, down into your gut, and it's all packed That's up. That's right. Packed but up ready, ready for your, uh, yeah. your stomach and your bacteria to Yeah, to the reason fibre is good for you, one of the major reasons is that it feeds the mm. good bugs in your gut preferentially. Oh, okay. All right, so you can get this synergistic effect. Yeah. So when you combine prebiotics with probiotics, providing you've got enough prebiotic there, Mm -hmm. And it's more than you can fit in a capsule, by the way. Yeah. But if you combine those things in the right way, mm. you can end up getting 200-fold increases mm. to the probiotics. Can, can we just quickly break it down and, and tell people that don't know uh, what, what is the difference between a prebiotic and a probiotic? Yeah. Probiotics, as everybody knows, are the good bugs for the gut. All right. Pro means life. Biotic. Mm -hmm. uh, well, pro means four. Biotic means life. Uh, so they are four good effects on your life, on your body. Prebiotics, I've got no idea why we called fibre ingredients prebiotics, but mm. the concept is that the prebiotics feed the probiotics. And, right. And that's why the major reason why fibre is good for you is that it selectively multiplies the good bugs in your gut. Right, okay, cool. So fibre predominantly, or no, not exclusively, predominantly affects your health in a positive way mm. via the good bugs in your gut. So if people are having immune problems, they've got to get their fibre up as well as their probiotics. Well, it, it, it helps, uh, you know, to, because probiotics, their major function is to suppress bad bugs. In our guts these days, we've done a lot of damage with antibiotics. Now, doctors have done what they believed was the right thing for people and mm. sa saved millions of lives, frankly, yeah. with, with antibiotics, emptied whole hospitals with antibiotics. But, but doesn't but it kill all of the bugs good and bad? That's the problem. Yeah. It, it's kind of uh, the side effect, the collateral damage. For example, I had a flagell uh, course, you know, metronidazole, to cure a Giardia what's, what's a flagell course and what's well, a Giardial and what's a what's a what's a what's a okay you sound like Fozzie Bear what a, what's a, <laughs> so, okay you, sorry I'm just going to stop you whenever there's a, yeah. and, and keep, keep in mind just one thing you got to remember in this interview that you're dealing with a complete moron okay so I, I'm going to ask where, a lot of questions <laughs> I'm going to ask okay. a lot of questions I can tell looking in your eyes when you glaze over I know <laughs> <laughs> okay alright up, okay. up to speed okay, okay. Galaziol and all that yeah, yeah. people are okay. going to be writing I'm going to Google that later I think when they get to a point when they've got to Google 20 things, they look for another podcast. Okay, another all show. right. Let's, let's keep it simple. <laughs> all right. You remember a decade or two ago, I think it must have been two decades ago, we had Giardia in the Sydney water supply. You remember yeah, what's, that? what's Giardia? It's Is a it, protozoan. I, I think I got two of their it's, albums. It's like, <laughs> it's like an amoeba. All right? Yeah, right, okay. And they're like 10 times the diameter of a, of a bacterial cell. They're like yeah. bacteria on steroids, but they're not bacteria. Mm. They're protozoan parasites. And so they cause all sorts of upsets. I uh, presume that I got it from the Sydney water supply. And um, that gave me explosive diarrhea, excuse Oy. me. You know, nearly cracked the toilet bowl, you know, Whoa. that sort of diarrhea. And uh, so the doctors prescribed uh, an antibiotic that's its chemical name is metronidazole and it comes under various brands, mm. one of which is flagell. Okay, so people might recognise that. So that was uh, to kill the band. That was to kill, that's right, to kill the giardia, which it did, but it did a lot of collateral damage to the good bugs in my gut. And the problem with that is that they tend very strongly to not come back again mm. once you've wiped them out. Like, for example, if you were to take penicillin for an earache... You don't stick the antibiotic in your ear. Yeah, yeah, that's You true. stick it in your mouth. Yeah. And the first bugs it contacts is down in your gut, mm. after the stomach, the small intestine, and it wipes those out totally before it gets to the bugs in your ear. Right. Okay, okay? fair enough. Yeah. So it's like an atom bomb going off down there and creates 
a, a desert and other bugs come down from your mouth and take over there, right? And some come up from underneath. And if they're gas producers, every time you eat something that those bugs like, they produce gas and you get bloating. Yeah, right, okay. And you can get gastric reflux as that gas comes up through the stomach. Oh, that's what that is. Okay, cool. Yeah. Now, doctors will then prescribe uh, what they call a proton pump inhibitor. They switch off your acid in your stomach. Is that like uh, antacid tablets or something like yeah, that? Yeah, well, mostly they... It, those are only neutralizers. Or bismo and all that kind They're of stuff. They're all neutralizers, yeah. but the, the ones that they give you are like... Um, metron, uh, sorry, Nexium, for example. Yeah. Right, or Xantax, those sorts of things that switch off your production of acid. Uh -huh. Now, that might solve the immediate problem and perhaps avoid... Uh, esophageal cancer so they're doing the right thing from that point esophagus cancer yeah esophageal yeah never heard of it called esophageal well that's the adjective from esophagus yeah all right wow we're so, learning adjectives today too there you go mm. sorry uh <laughs> so anyway um so that you know i'm not knocking the doctors for doing that yeah but as professor clancy at the center for digestive disease says bad things are happening to people on these proton pump inhibitor drugs mm, yeah okay because your stomach acid needs to be there mm. it protects you against other things are there a lot of doctors out there who um still don't believe in pre and probiotics because sure like well, it's and i think this is ridiculous like um my dad went to the doctors the other day and he, he was on antibiotics because you know when you on cancer you're having radiation and chemo yeah. and you get infections quite easily and he mm. had like a throat infection and he was on antibiotics and the doctor said no 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 don't don't take uh pre and probiotics it stops the antibiotics from working and, and, he, and he's like that must be a lot of crap and then he went and asked his um oncologist and the oncologist rang that doctor and t called him an idiot on the phone yeah, yeah that's so right. it, is this still is there still this war going on in the medical industry there where is. people aren't believing the the power of the microbiome look um yes I mean, there's an explosion in knowledge and research. Pardon the pun. In, in, <laughs> in the microbiome mm. area these days. And it's being connected to more and more um, uh, diseases. Mm. For example, they now suspect that Alzheimer's is an infection in the brain from a gum disease bug that causes gingivitis. No way. Yeah, yeah. Wow, and dogs get that. Yeah. It's the same thing. Do they? Okay. Oh, well, I know that from a Colgate commercial. Oh, okay. Because, you, know, you know, the lady that goes, you know, the, the fluoride gets into this chalk. Yes. And cause, uh, you know, can prevent gingivitis that dogs get. I don't know why they said that in the Colgate ad. Yeah. But that all, it always reminds me of that. Right. Okay. Well, the, the bug, uh, its technical name is Porphyromonas gingivalis, mm. which causes gingivitis. Yeah. Right. It's also associated with heart disease. It's the number one bug that causes heart disease. And so can we kill that off with a pre and probiotic? Well, or building uh, your immune system in your gut at the very least? Yeah. The, the, well, yeah, the immune system effect, yes. Um, m there are actually probiotics on the market specifically for oral conditions uh, made by Bliss Technologies in New Zealand. And oh, wow. Are they Bliss Tech? Are they the ones that make the lip balm as well? I uh, don't know about that. That's mm. probably Bliss Tech, isn't it, or something? Oh, so yeah. it's Bliss Tech. Yeah. Okay, so this, yeah. Is, this is Bliss, B-L-I-S. Uh-huh. Now, I shouldn't give them a free plug, but anyway. Yeah. You know, you can Send go, a check, will you? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we can't keep doing this for free. <laughs> but they have specific oral uh, probiotics that may be of some use in that area. Yeah. Uh, but the most of the probiotics on the market, of course, are for gut conditions. Yeah. So if go on. But I was just saying, you like you, you don't hear things like that or read about them in the paper very often. No. That, that you know, gingivitis can be linked to to all, all those different diseases right. and disorder. And see, I mean, and then that's that's one of the incredible things, and one of the reasons why I want to get you on the show is that I, I've been reading lately that like depression as well can sure. come from the gut. Yeah. Uh, your your skin as as well can look bad. Your energy right. levels. There, Absolutely. There's so well, much involved with gut health. It's not funny. Yeah, that's right. And I was giving a talk once, and a guy. Uh, decided I must be selling snake oil because it seems to affect so many conditions yeah, right. that emanate from the gut. And my GP say, ev says everything starts with the gut. But he put his hand up and said, does it cure baldness? You know. And I said, well, uh, I'm noticing more <laughs> hair growing out of my nose and my ears lately, so I think it's working its way up. But, uh, You're just growing too tall for your haircut. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Solar but, cell for a sex machine. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, mm. yeah, but people, but people, you're right. People are just very dismissive of it and, yes. and don't want to believe it. And 
But we find now that the uh, you know medical associations all over the world are now stepping up and saying, yeah, we do believe that the uh, they're actually saying. I read one the other day that said we have found like they discovered it rather than people like you that have been doing the groundwork all these years. Like they're they're claiming the credit for for finding this yeah. right now, which is disgusting. I mean, they should well, be should be giving people like you the credit. Well, I don't know about that, but um, you deserve look, an award. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> just buy the product. <laughs> yeah, buy, buy the product. That's, that'll do. Uh, yeah, but it works. Right. Yeah, that's right. Don't don't clap. Just throw money, as they say. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm not uh, motivated particularly that way. But look, um, I think what what I was saying about the uh, bugs taking over in the small intestine from the mouth and things like that, uh, they can not only produce gas, but they can damage the lining of the intestine. And once you get damaged your intestine then you get stuff going through into your bloodstream, through the wall of the intestine. And what does that do once it's through? Well, if it's food molecules, the, uh, uh, like big food molecules, proteins and things that shouldn't go like through Like meat, meat protein or something. Well, like dairy or, or gluten from yeah. bread and that sort of thing. Through the walls of your intestine. Yeah. So what's it do? Well, the immune system thinks that a virus is, or something like that is attacking it and will make antibodies to that and you become sensitive to those things. Oh, okay, so that's why people are getting food allergies. That's right. Because their food intestine walls are wearing down. That's right. Okay. So leaky gut is a big issue these days. How do you uh, stop leaky gut? You suppress the bad bugs that are causing the problem, right? Mm-hmm. And you know how we suppress those bad bugs. Yep. Right? By the, taking ProGood. Well, by taking a good probiotic with prebiotics mixed in with it. Mm-hmm. But you need, when I say good, you need the best possible strains because a lot of them on the market... And this is the reason why a lot of doctors don't believe in it because there's a history of probiotics that have had bad strains. Okay, so these doctors aren't complete idiots. No, they're not complete okay, idiots cool. at all. Um, there's been a lot of trials with so-called probiotics that... Don't have, have the prebiotic mixed in. Yeah, but also there might be bad strains. Now, I showed you a chart that you may wish to throw up on the screen at some stage. Yeah, okay, have a, have a look at this chart right now, yeah. Yeah. And it shows that out of 49 strains of probiotics that have been tested, in this case by the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries, right, in conjunction with the International Animal Health uh, Company, um, what they found was that about a third of the strains on the market are actually stimulating bad bugs. Oh, no. Right? That's a third of the products on the market. Yeah, well, a third of the strains that were tested in this trial which is 49, which would be a reasonable representation of what's on the market. That's crazy. And the ones that we use are amongst the very best at suppressing the bad bugs. And Mm. people who are are old enough to remember the Castrol ad, oils ain't oils, Mm. you know, in probiotics, oils ain't oils. You've got to make sure you've got the best one. Yes, and you can't tell from the name of the probiotic like Lactobacillus acidophilus because there are six strains in that trial and... Half of them stimulated the bad bug or did nothing at all. Whoa, that's massive. So you have to know, I have to know as a manufacturer, which cultures are the best to use Mm. to achieve the result. But do these these companies, do they know these facts and they keep pumping out the the bad probiotic? Well, I'm not in a position to comment on other companies. they should be doing their research. Well, that's true. Look, there have been a lot of shotgun type probiotics on the market where they say, oh, we've got 10 strains in mm. ours, so mm. it must be better than yours because yours has only got two strains. Mm. Well, what's the point of diluting the good, two good ones, the best ones? With 10 bad ones. With 10 bad ones, yeah. right? Uh, so that's the mistake they're doing. They're appealing to people's um, perhaps uh, preconception that the more different probiotics you have, the better off you are because you've lost a lot of variety in, uh, in your microbiome. Mm. The problem is that the bacteria we've lost through antibiotics are not probiotics. That's what people don't understand. Mm. They think that they're replacing all these strains yeah. with, by using a, a, a probiotic product. And they're not because in the gut, it's, very, it's, it's not r- really, a, a, in the adult gut, a good place for probiotic organisms to survive. They're not mm. good at competing in the gut unless you boost them at, uh, and put them in at very high levels. So we start with the best strains, boost them t- uh, at, at high starting levels and boost them to even higher levels, probably 200-fold mm. increase, mm. right? And you've got to have enough uh, 
prebiotic there to do that, mm -hmm. all right, and then you can see impacts on health. Mm. Okay, so we, we, we get that. You've explained that really well, yeah. that, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of probiotics out there that are actually helping the bad bugs. So, yeah. so make sure you do a bit of your own research before you, you go and try one of those products. <laughs> yeah. um, now, I want, I want to get into uh, all, of the, all of the different things that can go uh, wrong with your body because of the gut, but I also want to talk about uh, what, what food is good to eat uh, and drink that, that can help you help your gut in uh, a pro and prebiotic sense. Like you see kombucha on the market everywhere at the moment. I mean, yes. is, is that really as good as everyone's you know, making out that's look, selling it? It's the latest fad. The way I look at these things is that these kombuchas and kefirs and yogurts and fermented vegetables and things like that were the original sources for the probiotics that are on the market. Now mm. we've just discussed the types of probiotics on the market, the good and the bad, mm. right? They've all come from these sorts of sources. Mm. There are no other sources, really. So the fact is that you don't know when you're taking a kombucha or a kefir or whatever, whether there's the good probiotics in that yeah. or ones that have just got the name of a probiotic. It just tastes good. And it tastes good. Look, um, and it, look the, what I say is suck it and see. If it works for you, mm. then it's fine. Keep doing it. Uh, and these sorts of products for our great grandparents were probably well. It was all they could take: yogurts and so on. Um, so that was the only source that the, uh, of good probiotics that they had, or any probiotics that, mm. that, that was available to them. Mm. But that generation didn't have as many gut problems as we've got today yeah. because of the antibiotic thing. That's the and all of the, all of the horrible food. I mean, the, the, amount, yes. the amount of fundraisers I've hosted over the years, hundreds mm. of them, and I've spoken to doctors who whatever we're raising money for, whether it's, you know, cancer or autoimmune mm. problems or whatever, the, the number one thing that they always talk about is food yes. and the chemicals that we're spraying on our food, the, yes. the mass production of the food. So yes. it's, it's really important to be getting the, the right food in your gut without all those sprays and, and then, then helping it out with the right pre and probiotic. All of that is motherhood. Mm. A, a good diet is something that you can't contradict. Mm. But I would have to say that a, a, whatever you eat uh, in, the, in terms of good food can only act via the bug, bugs in your gut. Now, if you've had a lot of antibiotics in your life mm. that has wiped out all the good ones and you've now got only a limited range and you've got gut problems which indicate predominance of bad bugs, mm. then when you feed yourself even a good diet, mm. the chances are you're going to be feeding those bad bugs. There yeah. are people who are such extreme in extreme uh, conditions that they can't eat anything, even a good diet, mm. without getting what food? What, what food is good for you if you've got a gut problem? What, what would you tell people well, don't eat? Well, of course, fibre. Look, even though I have a lot of dairy um, and love dairy, right, uh, it's highly nutritious, and that's why we feed it to babies, of course. Mm. Um, but so the, the Chinese will queue up at, at Woolworths when it opens to, to buy all the, the baby powder because we've got such yeah. great versions of it in well, Australia. Well, that's true. That's really true. good quality and send it over to China for 100 that's times true. the price. And uh, so um, I'll insert here an interesting comment that I heard from Professor Barodi at the uh, Centre for Digestive Diseases when I was talking to him a week ago. And he said that, you know, how we talk about immunisations causing autism. There's a great yeah. fear out there that yeah. that's what... It is. Yeah. And look, we, we're not quite sure whether there is some sort of contribution, but we know that uh, the Chinese, for example, have got an epidemic of autism and they're not immunising. So you've got to okay, say, Okay, so Hang maybe on. it's not. Yeah, we know what, what we think uh, causes autism and that's clostridia, uh, spore-forming bacteria that are producing nerve poisons, neurotoxins. So if you... Uh, and I heard a Russian neurologist say... This is becoming gener generational because grandmother uh, had antibiotics mm. and it depleted the vaginal microbiota, which then meant that the daughter that was born picked up a, a less diverse microbiota. Whoa. And then the same thing happened to the next generation. The mum had had antibiotics, even less diversity in her vaginal microbiota. And the vaginal microbiota contains the gut bugs that will become your gut microbiota, right? And so then we've, we've produced gen a generation that has got a very skewed microbiota. And if 
clostridia that are producing neurotoxins, and one of them is the tetanus bug, would you believe? Tetanus, like when you, you cut yourself on a nail yes, or something yes. like that, yeah. And you get lockjaw, it's a nerve poison. Yeah, yeah, wow. Right? And these autistic kids often are, uh, have a, a microbiota that's got too many clostridia in it and clostridium tetani that are producing these neurotoxins that are travelling up the vagus nerve because the gut I've been lining... There. Yeah. Has been, <laughs> the, the lining of the gut is damaged, so you've got all sorts of stuff going through and reaching the brain. Wow. The gut uh, microbiota also control not only the barrier in the gut, but the barrier between the blood and your brain. So now we've got a generation of people who are having uh, stuff going across into their brain. And that's causing, we think, the autisms and the Alzheimer's and uh, multiple sclerosis, you know, all these the Parkinson's. They're all now very strong theories that all of this is due to having a, a gut that's out of balance. Wow, that's and, crazy. Yeah. All right. And, and that's where, where the uh, depression is coming from as well. People get bad skin. They get bad low energy levels. All of those things are, are come back to the gut. Um, for um, the first one you said, depression. Uh, I had someone who said they were so depressed and anxious. You know, we know that, uh, that, well, they would go out and pound the pavement, so to speak, right, to try and get rid of this anxiety, this mm. tension. And she said after a, uh, a few weeks on our product, she said she could stay at home without even thinking about going for a run she didn't need to and she mm. watched but i find that as well like if i'm yeah. a bit anxious and, and feel a little yes. bit depressed i go for a run and and, and sure. I, I get the blood pumping and then yeah. it goes all of away. that's good yeah. and i'm not speaking against that i'm mm. saying that this exogenous depression uh, it's it sorry this is endogenous depression stuff that's being generated from internally because yeah. the gut microbiome is responsible for producing 70 or 80 percent of the neurotransmitters like serotonin that your brain needs to function properly. Yeah, right. Okay. And serotonin comes from the gut. That's, yeah, that's, most that's, of it That's is the produced. happy chemical that you get. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so people who are depressed are low on serotonin, and that could easily be due mm. to bad bugs in the it's, gut. I never, never realised until I was doing a little bit of research that serotonin actually comes from your gut. I thought it was just yeah. some little capsule in your brain that's been, and then, oh, that's better. <laughs> and it just came out at certain moments when, when things happened in your body and your life that... Yeah. Well, How do you experience it? it it's also uh, serotonin and dopamine are also produced um, in cells from the components, right? And the enzyme that puts those bits together needs, on, in one case, um, like with dopamine, yeah. it takes dopa and puts an amine group on it. It needs vitamin B6 to do that. And the other one, serotonin from tryptophan, needs vitamin b1 stuck to the enzyme to make that happen so again we get back to the fact that absorption of vitamins and minerals in the gut is critical for your functioning and for your brain to function correctly mm. now if you've got gut damage you're not absorbing enough of your vitamins and minerals all right mm. so everything comes back ultimately to having a good set of bugs in your gut and the only way nowadays that we can achieve something approaching those good conditions is to take a very good symbiotic, the synergy between the pre and the probiotics, right, mm -hmm. and suppress the bad bugs that are good at doing the damage. Mm -hmm. When that happens, the gut heals itself, all right? Mm -hmm. and, so, and also, your immune system is looking into your small intestine particularly through payers patches, they're called. These are the receptors for your immune system. And when it sees a lot of bad bugs in there on the payers patches, it says we've got to increase inflammation. And that's why inflammation is associated with a lot of diseases mm -hmm. because it's the immune system increasing the inflammation in response to bad bugs in the gut. Right. So if you're feeling all bloated and your whole, not just in your gut but your whole body, then that's, that's what's going on from your gut and you yeah. need, need to get your pre and probiotic on. Yeah. Inflammation also causes depression because your brain gets inflamed. Right. All right. So all these things work together. Just about any disorder that you want to talk about comes back to the gut bugs. So uh, I had a friend of mine uh, who, who had a, a really bad gut problem. I can't remember exactly what it was, but uh, he, 
who's beyond help. So many doctors didn't know what to do. He tried a cocktail of different drugs. And then he went to do something called a fecal transplant, yes. which is just the most out there thing. I was sure that he was making it up. Do you want to explain to people what a fecal transplant is and how that is helping people? Yeah. Basically, it's been found that with a disease um, involving Clostridium difficile, that's a spore-forming bug that when it takes over in your gut, it, it causes your intestine to disintegrate and it kills you, basically, in most cases. That's what he had? Yeah. Okay. Well... Professor Barodi at the Centre for Digestive Diseases, mm -hmm. he uh, started putting poo from a healthy person up the back passage of people who had that condition and was healing them. And this has now taken off around the world. In America, they're, they're using them, and, and Tom is actually um, uh, working with people in America to produce um, what he calls crapsules. Oh. which are capsules of poo. I see you swallowing, e yes. E eating... Sh yes, that's right. And in fact, the origin of that was Adolf Hitler. There you go. Here's one for you. Yeah, he used to talk shit, but I didn't know... Yeah. He, yeah, he, <laughs> he certainly did that, <laughs> and he had, you know what, for brains. <laughs> but but uh, what happened was he also had a, a really bad bowel problem. Yeah. And his doctor took poo from yeah. a healthy German soldier and gave it to Hitler in capsule form. And it fixed his problem. No. Yeah. So they've been doing that since way back then. Oh, look, it's been happening since. Crazy. Look, the ancient Chinese dis discovered this as well thousands of years ago. Ancient you know. Chinese. Yeah. There look, you go. They were ahead of us in many, many ways. So how do you know whose poop is good? Like, do you go, hey, that person looks really healthy. Like, they go to the gym a lot and they eat a lot of good food. Yeah. They don't drink alcohol. Let's get their poop. Yeah. Give me that. Or do you line people up? Well, like, well it's a... Hmm. There, are, there are now people that they've identified as... as um, Super producers. Super poopers? Like. Yeah, super poopers. That's a good one. Super and, and, poopers. And so would the doctor be a super pooper scooper? <laughs> but, but my, I love it. My, you can use that term. It's fine. Oh, that's as long it. as I get a credit in a medical first. journal, I don't care. You heard it first here. Uh, but my, my buddy, uh, he, he just got the poop from the nurse. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It was because she was hot or, or, <laughs> or what? Is well, you see, on? you know, even obesity. What is this? This is this crazy. Yeah. The, 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 even obesity is known to be associated with the type of bugs in your gut. Yeah. And they've done experiments with mice, for example, mm -hmm. and taken poo from a fat mouse and stuck it in a skinny mouse and they become fat. And uh, so also, the, also, is that the bugs inside the, the fat mouse is just holding on to the food or not yeah. digesting it properly? Or Well, there's a lot of reasons. Um, the production of appetite uh, suppressants or not, or appetite stimulants, is, has a lot to do with it. But also certain bacteria extract more energy from the food than others do. So it's a combination of those, those effects. Basically, they've even found that if they've got anxious mice and they take poo from them and put them into normal mice, they become anxious. And I always say to people, if somebody came, approached me and with poo and wanting me to eat it or whatever, then I'd feel anxious too. But no, it's, you know, and... <laughs> oh you can't help but laugh. I know. No. It's ridiculous. It's, it's just incredible science, isn't it? It is. And, uh, but it's incredible science. It's incredible that we figured it out. I mean, actually just like, hey, put it in there and take it out of there. But... It, it's Look, to figure out like a, on a, a, a micro level to, to, to get the right bugs from someone's gut and just put it in another gut. We're, we're on the Has anyone ever rejected? Oh, yes. See, the big problem is that if the... Well, your immune system when you're a baby learns to support the set of bugs that you got from mum because nature assumes that that was a good set because she reached childbearing age. Right. You okay. see? Yeah. So that's a good set, we'll assume. Then basically the immune system's got training wheels on in the first couple of years of life, and it looks at those bugs in the intestine and says, these are the ones I've got to support for the rest of this person's life, mm. and ipso facto, I will reject any other type that comes in. Yeah. That's why you can recover from a salmonella infection, mm -hmm. because the immune system says, hey, I don't recognize this bug, I'm gonna kick it out. Oh, okay, right, now, okay. The downside of that is, <clears throat> it will also recognize bugs from somebody else's poo. That are good, and that, kick them out. Well, that are good in that person, the donor, but it says... Not sure the, what that is. Exactly. Let's kick it out. Yeah. And that's why a lot of transplants it go, you know, wrong after a few months. But what, is it, what happens if it goes wrong? It just, like, well, you just you poop go, it out. Well, you do it again. Um, yeah. But I've had people that have had several poo transplants, and it's because 
the donor's poo has a different spectrum of bugs in it to what that recipient's immune system is used to. Mm. So does that mean that if, uh, if it does work in someone's gut, does it stay with them and it can be uh, yes. transferred to their child when, when they have a Yes, have quite possibly. Kid? See, Wow, we're, that's crazy. We're at the threshold of the understand. We, we now understand the critical importance of all the bugs in the gut. Mm. Now, 50 years from now, we may well have a bank of a couple of thousand good strains, right? Now, the good strain in you is not necessarily the same good strain in me, mm-hmm. but my good strain does the same job as your good strain. Yeah. But they'd have a bank of cultures, but they've got to work out how to switch off the immune system's rejection side long mm. enough for these things to establish. It makes so much sense now we're talking about that when you say you know, someone's sick or they've got some sort of problem that they've got to try a lot of different things mm. because some things might be great for this person yeah. but it might not necessarily be great sure. for that person because of all the different um, you know, micro biology yes. things going on in their gut. Yeah, hey, um, so what, what got you fascinated about uh, microbiology? How did you actually get started? Well... <laughs> It's interesting. I mean, when I first went to uni, I mean, I didn't have a clue what I was going to do even before uni. I'd finished school. My mum took me to a management consultant and they said, you should go to uni and do biological sciences. Your IQ is up there for university, so that's what you should do. Um, And that was the first I had been told. I came from a working class family, you know, brought up in Blacktown. um, And no offence to Blacktown people, they're, they're great people. But I had no aspirations to go to university. Uh, but I went and started in engineering, and uh, then I, as I progressed, I switched to science and uh, uh, ended up uh, wanting to be a chemist. But my father died at the end of my second year, and uh, I had to get a traineeship from the government, and they insisted that I become a microbiologist. Now, when I look back, I had a microscope when I was a kid. Oh, really? So you were kind of fascinated from it as a kid? I was always a microbiologist what were you and looking didn't at? know it. Oh, mosquitoes, whatever, you know. It was only a cheap microscope, but um, always fascinated. I used to lie on the ground and watch ants, you know. <laughs> Not that I was a nerd, of course, but... <laughs> you didn't, like, cut their legs off or anything? No, 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 I wasn't cruel you, you to animals. you ever have kids in school, like, they catch flies and they put it in a little yeah. like, cork fly catcher and they pull the wings off it? It's still sick, those kids. You weren't one of those evil child professors, were you? No, although I did make some contact explosive once as a, after I graduated. Uh, what? You um, made explosives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Contact explosives. What is that? And put, well, you just get... I, I shouldn't tell people... Is that like Semtex? No, 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 no. It's just, um, well, uh, ammonia and iodine uh, together, if you mix them, when it dries out, it's ammonium triiodide and it's a contact explosive. What's that and mean? The contact meaning you... I mean, when you, it when you hit up. it, it'll go bang. Oh, yeah, like throwdowns. Yeah, yeah, that's right. right. And that sort of thing. And uh, flies, it, when you dabbed it along the window, the flies go on it and bang. And it blows. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I'm absolutely serious. Why did I not figure that out in yeah, science class at school? I remember we had a science teacher called Mr. Cleasy. Oh, yeah. And I was always wanting to conduct my own experiments. Yeah. And one in particular where uh, we had a Bunsen burner, you know, a little thing with a flame. What am I telling you for? I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I put a, a thermometer in the flame yeah. oh. because I, I just thought that it would, I want to see how hot it could get. Yeah. But the thermometer <laughs> melted the end of it. blew up right <laughs> in would. front of me. I had mercury all over myself. Yeah, yeah. I had to kick, kick everyone out of the classroom yeah. and then evacuated the school. Oh, that's a bit like, extreme. You, Come you know. on. And, and like, oh, I was going to get suspended. And oh, yeah. No, it Mer- was okay in the cartoons. When yeah. someone's sick, they put it in their mouth and then and it just goes hot. But, yeah, you're not supposed to. Don't do that at home, kids. No. no or science right. class. Yeah. Mercury, of course, is toxic. But, I mean, as, as a young fellow, I had mercury in my hand. It was interesting to watch it running around, wasn't it? Well, that's you not know. good. Hopefully it's not in your blood now. No. Did you ever I've do any tested. other mental experiments like that that just you just went, holy hell? Or are there any experiments coming up that you want to conduct that, that you haven't done before? Oh, look, there's always experiments. Uh, I mean, I was in charge of R&D and had 20 people under me, a lot with PhDs, and I was thinking of experiments all the time. See, basically... Is it the CSIRO? No, I never worked for the CSIRO. Uh I was always in industry. Consultant sort of thing? No, I was uh, employed uh, by a a subsidiary of Burnsville. Mm. You remember Burnsville? Um, And uh, we manufactured cultures for the dairy industry, frozen concentrates, so the cheese maker could just put this stuff straight in the cheese fat rather than growing their own. And so there was a lot of research involved in that, and we had several PhD people 
in my team. Uh, so I could, I'm a lazy person, I, but it's fun. When you've got a team of scientists reporting to you, mm. you can think of experiments and say, go and do this, and they go and do it. And give go, it go and put some probiotic in your eyeball. <laughs> yeah. and come back and tell me what happens. Not quite like What's that. What's the weirdest <laughs> thing you told someone to go and do, to go and try out? Oh, I can't, can't think now, but, uh, you know, there was a whole factory associated with our uh, production of that, and it was, it was good to be able to put things into production. And, uh, you know, there's a certain amount of risk-taking there in terms of will it succeed. Um, look, I've, uh, look, I've never worked in my life. It's, I've just had fun. You just love doing it. Oh. And even working on yourself, I mean, that, that's, that's the sign of a good professor. And you, <laughs> you, you, you see it in so many movies where a, yeah. pro, a professor is you know, operating on himself to see if he can get things to the next level. Incredible Hulk. That's right. Eric Banner. I mean, he's one yeah. of the greatest scientists that ever lived. I mean, yeah. what he did to himself was amazing. Yeah. Well, um, not sure if he's still around, but yeah. you wouldn't like him when he's angry. But you, right. you, uh, you tried some strains on oh, yourself, yes. which, which could have done That's anything right. to you. Absolutely. And, and to just explain to everyone uh, Well, for, for example, um, one time uh, Professor Barodi had asked us to produce uh, a particular bug for him uh, to treat patients, and we were doing that in the laboratory. Mm. And I took, uh, you know, even though this bug had been, wait for it, isolated from a septic appendix, I took 10 mils straight out of a fermenter and swallowed it. And Someone else's... From uh, appendix. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you drank something from someone else's appendix. Yes. And it was fantastic. My bowel was fantastic for three days until it washed out. You're joking. No, no. It's not the fact that it, it, this bug hadn't caused the sepsis in the appendix. What was happening was it's, it's a good bug that's predominating in the gut. And if somebody's got appendicitis, it was there in the, in the appendix as well as the bad bugs. And I knew that although it had come from that source, that it was predominantly a good bug. But, but, but the, the bad bugs that were there and, and someone had appendicitis, yeah, but we, you think, oh, they could no, give no, it no. to me? This had been isolated and purified. Right, okay, okay, okay. So cool. I knew... But could you be sure? Well, yeah, after I swallowed it, I was sure. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you are game. That's crazy. Well, Is that the strangest thing you've ever put in your mouth? <laughs> We won't go there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that is crazy. So, um, and then you develop your own strain. Yes. Which, well, which helped you get rid of your irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah, one of the strains that I still use, I'd isolated from a Japanese food back in the 1980s. And when it was put through our cooperative research centre at the University of New South Wales, um, it turned out to be one of the best. What was the food? Um, it was uh, an ice cream, actually. Somebody had put this into the ice cream deliberately but that's what i got it out of okay but it uh, when i say why would you choose that um we were looking for good probiotics at and it was the just time. a really really good one the best one yeah. you could find yeah it's one of the, it's turned out to be one of the best that's right um, and you don't know that until you've you've conducted right. trials with it and that's tried right. things with it and the other one that we use uh it came in its original form from a baby's bowel um and this baby had been the only one who didn't develop diarrhoea uh, when it swept through the daycare center that this child was in. And so the scientists um, isolated from that and sent it to the American type culture collection. And what happened there was that they were um, l uh, putting it into ampoules and the technician forgot to close a particular valve and contaminate the laboratory. Then everything else that, that that was produced in that laboratory, other strains, had this in it as a contaminant. And so scientists around the world have been isolating this bifidobacterium. Because it's so good. Yeah. So let's just, let's just uh, reiterate that. So you've got a, a strain from Japanese ice cream yeah. and a baby's butt. That's right. And that made you better. That's right. I love summing things up. <laughs> that, that is crazy. So let's, because that, that fascinates me that the, the way you find these strains that, that you do all of this research on, and then you go, right, this strain right here is so resilient. It's, got a, it's affected all these other strains in the room. And this, this one that came from Japanese ice cream, this has yeah. just, just gone through all of these tests and is still working. Are there, and so we've got the Japanese ice cream, we've got the baby's butt. Are there, well, tell me where you got the other strains from. Oh, well, uh, they're the two that we use uh, pretty well exclusively, but um, the others. Oh, that's, that's uh, Pro Goods. 
strains. Yeah, they're the right. ones that are okay. pro-good. Yeah. Jonathan Elliman never told me baby's butt and ice cream. Yeah, well, maybe he didn't want to <laughs> put you off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm feeling a bit under the weather today. Maybe I need some baby's butt and ice cream. That's maybe it. that's an ice cream flavour. <laughs> <laughs> we could go up. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's crazy. So they're the, they're the two main ones. How many yeah. strains do you have in ProGood? Uh, two. Two. They're, they're the ones. Yeah, great. Yeah. I mean, our philosophy is... One's a pre and one's a probiotic? No, both? both probiotics. Yeah. And then we add triolose, an inulin, and an, a, a fibroid, it's called. It's an arabinogalactan. Yeah, but they're not ones that you guys discovered. No. Um, these are on the market, but it's the way you combine them that's critical because the triolose boosts the lactobacillus and the other two selectively boost the bifidobacterium. Um, the inulin boosts it in the first part of the large bowel, the, the, the colon, mm-hmm. um, that's the ascending colon, the bit that goes up. And then the uh, arabinogalactan feeds them also and boosts the already boosted uh, bifidobacteria right through the whole intestine. So you've got a fast burn and then a slow burn, if you like. And the other thing that makes this product so special is that compared to capsules which have to dissolve in stomach acid and the, the freeze-dried cells are trying to come back to life by sucking in concentrated hydrochloric acid. These, we put this in a powder into a glass of water. Within seconds, those cells have come back to life and they're plump and happy and ready to go. Right, wow. And they they don't suck in the stomach acid. They don't need to. So we get a much higher survival rate into the small intestine. So that's something uh, I really wanted to ask you, which I never understood, because uh, Johnny's always uh, got it, got his pro-good, his mm. uh, pre and probiotic, it's in the freezer, yeah, and gives it to me and says, it'll be right for a, a day or two, but make sure you put it in the fridge when you get home. And I, That's right. Like, why do, why, do you, why do you freeze it? And what, what are they doing when they're dormant? Are they asleep or are they dead? Yes, they're asleep. What's the story? They're asleep, uh, they're dormant. Both those terms would be appropriate. And, um, you know, they're freeze-dried, they're dehydrated and uh, moisture will bring them back to life. Uh, so one of the problems with capsules is moisture from the gelatin will migrate into them and cause a problem. Right. Okay. Now, um, we put six months shelf life on the fully mixed uh, symbiotic, mm-hmm. but we put three years on them when we separate into two... Oh, in the sachets? In the sachets, right, okay. we've got conjoined sachets. One's got the culture side, yeah. right, and that uh, is kept fully dry. Yeah, and right. the other side has got the more moist packed lunch, if you like. And so how long can that not be in the fridge for? For three oh, years? Oh, well, look, <laughs> I t- have taken it around Europe and left it in my suitcase, and it's t- I can tell whether it's working or not on my gut. Right, okay. Right? And so it's fine. At the end of three and a half weeks, it was mm. at room temperature. No problem at all. It's crazy that it's an organism that helps your yeah. gut. Yeah. And it, it can just lie dormant for a year or two and then sure. you add water and it comes to life and, That's and right. fixes you. That's right. That's just bizarre. Yeah. Um, and um, the other thing to realise, uh, I guess, is that there are shelf-stable probiotics around, mm. right? But all they do is put 20% more in and it just declines to whatever the, the claim is on the label at that time. So ours will do the same. It's, it, so there's no real difference. If you want to have the stuff out of the fridge, you can. Um, but we say that if you want optimum activity and you're like I am a quality fanatic, mm. then it's best to keep it in the fridge. But we send these products, in, even the jar one, all over Australia at room temperature without any problem because the amount of time is not enough to, me- to make a measurable difference in the numbers. So why are oncologists contacting you now and asking for your product? And well, how can it help cancer patients? Look, uh, I don't know that m- many oncologists are, but what we've noticed with cancer patients is that the chemo that they're on kills a lot of their gut bacteria and they get nauseous because of that. Well. Anecdotally, what we're seeing is a reduction in nausea when people who are on chemo take our product. Now, that's well, that, you know what? That's what my dad says. He, you know, he's been on chemo and radiation uh, for like six or seven years, right. ridiculous amount of time, and he says he doesn't feel sick. Yeah, and he he doesn't know why. And obviously, you know, ProGood has something to do with it. 
or yeah. so he believes that it has something to do with it because yeah, it seems most to. other people in, in the same situation as him have like a sickness over their whole body and they're always feeling horrible, but yeah, it seems to be working right. for him. That's right. Um, I mean, we don't make that as a claim, you know what I mean? We, yeah. We, uh, I'm just I'm saying what no, you know, my dad's own experience sure, is, sure. And, and that's definitely not your claim. No, and he's not alone, you know. But, we, you know, I was talking to Professor Barodi and about Crohn's disease and, you know, a friend of mine taking the product and um, where she'd had five major operations to remove part of a bowel when she was on the drugs for Crohn's. And they said to her um, eight or nine years ago, you've, you've got to go and get even stronger drugs. Liverpool Hospital will bring them in from America, especially for you, and you'll still need an operation after two years. Mm. They said, stay off the drugs for, for three weeks and before you go on to the new ones to let the old ones wash out and she just took our product a dose in the morning and dose in the evening right and at the end of that three weeks she felt so good that she never started the new drugs and every time she had a colonoscopy after that the doctor said what are you doing because all the ulcers are shrinking uh, you help, you, your intestine where the joins are, uh, are looking so much healthier keep doing what you're doing Eight wow. years later, they were saying, we can't find any Crohn's in your body. Wow. So you're not claiming it cures Crohn's, but it no, certainly didn't cure that. hers. No, I can't do that. But that's an, it's an anecdote, but there are others that have said What, what, are, what are some other success stories from, from taking your amazing pre and probiotic? Well, you get people. Uh, one woman came to me and said, look, we, we, I've been to so many doctors and they've ended up, and dietitians and so on, and they said that there's nothing more we can do for you. She's so sick and lost so much weight that she's basically dying from it. And after, I don't know, was it a month on our product or something like that, she rang me up and said, I'm 80% back to normal. Uh, your product's amazing. So that's the sort of thing we can do. The way I approach it is you've got to be... See, some people say, oh, I'm not allowed to have FODMAPs, you know, these fructooligosaccharides and, and so on. Like, what is that? Well, uh, compounds of fructose, like inulin in our product, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. We're not allowed to have that because... What's, on a, what's it, a fructose and an inulin? Well, fructose is a sugar, like it's... Oh, a, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. It's honey, yeah. it's fructose. And fruit sugar. I, call, I thought fructose is what I thought it was. Oh, fru fructose, okay. It comes from fruit. Know. Yeah, it, it's only a pronunciation. Yeah. I'm, I'm a Westie, fructose. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to B-Town, Blacktown. <laughs> That's right. Um, but anyway, fructose. Um, and if you take those FODMAPs and you've got a bad gut problem, of course, all you're doing is feeding the bad bugs. But if you take it in conjunction with the good probiotics, like in our stuff, then you're actually suppressing the bad bugs before they can feed on the fructose and so on. Okay, so you, don't, you, you might get a transition period where you have to start low and work up, but within a couple of weeks, usually all those symptoms are gone and you're powering on. And uh, I've seen people with dark shadows under their eyes from food sensitivities and uh, they might go through a, a, a healing crisis, as they call it, for a couple of weeks. But after that, boom, they're powering on, the shadows are disappearing and they're saying they feel fantastic. Yeah, actually, I used to have that a lot more. I, I, I didn't really think that there was any connection, but it's amazing yeah. how much connection there is. Yeah. So uh, back on the uh, the whole cancer thing, so it, 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 it fixes the, uh, the lining of your stomach and uh, in, it, well, in some people it can do that and it also helps build your immune system and when your sure. immune system is being hammered with, with which, what, is, what is essentially a, a super powered antibiotic which is chemo and sure. radiation sure. then you need this to, to build up your immune system and is that yes. what it's doing and is that why yes. a lot of cancer patients are coming to you for your product? Yes, uh, I'd say that it, it, it is a large component of of what's happening and if you think about it although we look i don't claim to be able to reverse cancer mm. you know and you need to go to your doctor mm. if you've got uh, if you suspect you might have cancer um, but uh, bowel cancer for example is often caused by bad bugs producing ca cancer causing compounds right carcinogens from bile for example and if you're constipated, which again is caused usually by bad bugs producing neurotoxins that paralyze the nerves in the bowel so that nothing moves, right? Now, that, when you've got that situation of bad bugs 
and these carcinogens that they're producing in contact with the bowel pr over a prolonged period, that's often what causes bowel cancer, all right? So suppress those bad bugs, get the bowel moving again, hopefully, and I've had a doctor tell me that I've changed her life because she was so badly constipated she'd go once, once a week with the help of strong laxatives, mm. you know, but then she's going every day. So um, now I can't guarantee that everyone will get that result. Mm. But My mathematician, uh, he had a really, really <coughs> bad problem with constipation, mm. but then he worked it out with a pencil. That's the one. That's the one. Yes. That's the only dad the joke we'll do in this whole show. <laughs> but that, that was my dad's joke. Thanks, Dad. I've got to credit him for that. Yeah. Um, well, Matt, it, it's been such a, an eye-opener, an ass-opener, stomach-opener, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, talking to you and uh, the incredible discoveries that you've made. Uh, if people want to see an incredible movie, it's called The Gut Movie, which uh, I believe you have a starring role in. Well, I, uh, yeah, I have a bit part. You yeah. know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's all right. You still get a credit on IMDb, don't you? Yeah. I think so. This could be the, the next big thing for you. Yeah. Uh, but t <laughs> tell us, when we, before we finish up, just tell us about The Gut Movie and uh, a, a little bit about that. I, I did see it. It was incredible. This, this uh, young man. He, Kale Brock. Kale Brock. He, he traveled all the way over to Africa and yes. you know, lived with these people in the, in. Uh, uh, in, in an African tribe and That's right, examined the their poop and examined his before he left, lived with them, ate their food and then came back and, and saw the incredible changes in his gut health That's just right. from eating now, their food. The, the question always is, is that going to be permanent? Uh, and I doubt it. But when he was consuming the raw root vegetables that they were consuming, which had, of course, bacteria growing on those starches, right, and eating those, he was, of course, increasing the diversity at least temporarily. And diversity is a, si a sign of health. So the more diverse your microbiome is, the more likely you are to be healthy. And so he was able to at least temporarily improve his gut diversity. Um, it remains to be seen, uh, and I, I really believe that it, it bounces back when, once you're not once you come back and start eating the same foods that exactly. you do back here in the Western See, world. See, he was basically taking a symbiotic with these raw foods with the bacteria associated yeah. with them. So the only way you can achieve that now here in Sydney is by taking symbiotics, right? Pro good. Yeah. Which is exactly uh, a scientifically reproduced version of what those Kalahari Bushmen, the San people, were, are eating. Or breaking it down, baby poop. And Japanese ice cream. That's it. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's crazy. Uh, thank you very much, John Elliman. You're, uh, you're, you're an amazing man. What, you, what you've done for so many people is absolutely incredible. I hope you've realized this because you go around and you, you're in these films and you, you lecture all over the place and all over the world talk, talking about gut health, the microbiome, and, and it's just mind-blowing. So thank you for all the work you've done, not you're just right. for me, my family, and so many other people, and keep up the good work. Good on you. Thanks, Good on Mike. you, mate. Good on you, mate. John Elliman, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>